I would like to reach millions of people all over the world who will hear, read and understand my message. If there is any truth in my allegations, this becomes a newsworthy video. It is my pledge to be truthful. I feel events that happen to me do not happen to average person. That means it is not likely that you, the reader, the listener will share my fate. There is a one in a million chance, or a lot more, that you, or your loved ones will share my fate. Therefore, you may want to listen to me, or you may want to listen out of curiosity. I have provided a way for the public to easily contact me by SMS in this introduction, which is repeated in Chapter 14. Sometimes, people's mobile numbers or handsets holding those SIM cards just explode and die after posting publicly. Well, hopefully this won't happen, but if you don't get a response from me or your SMS transmission shows as failed, you can contact me through the video platform and will hear from me in due course. I will check my SMS messages once a day. I feel it is lawful to inform someone of an objection first, rather than just take their site down. I am helplessly alone. I have faced sabotage of my publications, and even the ISBN agency of UK and Ireland did not bother to reply to my query. I am used to sabotage. Files I store online crash. Accounts get locked. I am storing these videos on duplicate USB sticks and online to remount them in case of a crash. If you contact me by SMS with a request, you must identify yourself. I will not entertain anonymous requests. Any instructions you give should be clear. Video hosts probably have an automatic right to take down any content that they host. I prefer if video host warns me to remove or alter offending portions. If appropriate, please include a phone number to hold a discussion. I also feel that three major publishing platforms Amazon, draft to digital and Barnes and Noble have sabotaged my book publishing. That is just my opinion about them. It has not been proved. No credit card I have ever works on Amazon since a year which Amazon says is a technical hitch. Also Amazon refused me a vendor account in 2022, saying I can only have one if I live in India. This is interesting since I have battling deportation to India since 1997. It was only the Irish who were kind enough to grant me a leave to remain. For their goodness, I owe them much gratitude and thanks. But whether they understand it or not, the Irish have not given me the gift of life. The Irish government have given me a roof over my head and a place to wrap up my life before I die. This is an improvement on the existing situation I arrived with in Ireland. With pieces of bread not making a life, Ireland extends a gift of grace to enormous numbers of beggars and other categories such as ladies forced into the game and intellectually challenged people who are yet not disabled. They can live a normal life. Without stigmatizing those types I can say Ireland hosts a lot of overseas people who would accept pieces of bread as the ultimate gift of life. I am a physics graduate who has been removed from physics. Do not misunderstand what I just said. There is no way by law to formally remove me from physics. Physics does not involve working with people. No license for working in physics. So physicists cannot be struck off. Some people asked about this. Please understand that nobody outside the girly culture is going to assume that being included or excluded in physics makes me a good or bad person. What all I said about being removed from physics is my subjective opinion. I got in touch with my physics Manchester classmates of 1983 and found they were quite nasty towards me. When I was in hospital I as an inpatient in December 2022, 
Some women told a medical consultant they saw information about me on the internet which makes them concerned. They feared I suffer from paranoid delusions and so need me to checked out by a psychiatrist. I do regularly Google myself. I have not seen any information about me, or put by me, or by other people, in recent years which would make people think something like that. I did Google myself after being discharged from the hospital, and found a book written by me called, International Physics Conspiracy. Did some ladies, who are perhaps not doctors, see the word conspiracy in the title of my book? Did they feel I am paranoid because I wrote a book with conspiracy in the title? A lot of people speculate that Einstein had a mental illness and was born mentally retarded and took a nanny's help. I might very well have one millionth of that mental illness simply by being an ex-graduate of physics, which was Einstein's subject. But my book writing has been sabotaged, and none of my books are available. The lady at Trinity College may have thrown away my legal deposits. So by the time I wrote this above-mentioned book, one did not try to make a legal deposit. Before I entered Ireland, my name was in the Trinity College book catalogue because of my connection to a famous agency. In Ireland I made a legal deposit in 2021 and felt the lady acted strangely. I fancy later, my name was no longer on that catalog. I mean if I die now my books aren't even copyrighted for what they are not worth. I have been banned from Meetup after I faced racism from a group I did not know and had never met before. I am seen as a despicable person. But I think my documentary is worthwhile since you don't get too many contributions from people with paranoid delusions. The majority of mentally incompetent people would not create a video documentary. Hatred may have a reason, but people who hate others are deluded. <laughs>
Whether you can believe the above theory or not, this theory has been used to enroll women in very large numbers, I mean the scheme worked. Unwilling donors of the collective should have a right to leave these collectives without facing life-limiting deprivations like I do. Anyway, when any man befriends me either for a personal friendship, or jobs, or intellectual matters, women express extreme resentment to the extent all men ostracize me to keep them happy. I noticed this in the UK and Ireland. Maybe it is the same way in Canada. In this documentary, doctors are killing me etc. I narrate some incidents in my life, including medical events, to show what makes me feel I am being killed. I have nothing in common with women, yet forced to stay with them all the time. I do not share women's viewpoint, so the discussion can become an argument. I am not a party to women's joys. I do not take part in women's happiness. I am no longer interested in opening conversations with people who fight every word I say. When you hear my medical stories, you will understand that life is too short to waste on people who pretend to like you. It is my goal to be happy. I want to keep this goal until I die, even if I do not achieve it. I understand that you may not believe a word of what I say. If a woman works as a secretary in a doctor's office, I find it easy to understand why she had a hard time with everything I say. I was not born and raised in the UK and Ireland. I was born and raised in a country torn by wars and famines for a decade after my birth. I have been given an Irish residence permit legally. I do have a right to work. I am a chronic invalid who is not getting proper medical care. I am still walking around using buses and in a convenient spot in the city center, although I may be moving soon. This makes me shop without difficulty. A few hours of my daily cycle are spent on a roller coaster of dizziness and a squeezy chest. By 2 p.m., I feel better. I have had at least one heart attack in my life, but I expect to never have another one. Unless I overdose another time. It was not too comfortable, and I am unlikely to make the same mistake twice. Nobody speaks to me, naturally, that would prevent finding work. If I looked for a place where no man would ever come to find work, to find friends, I would succeed, since women, the gatekeepers would allow me to have work and friends. That is not my choice. I will not do it. Nobody on this earth has to make an effort to meet women. I did not have the legal right to work in the UK where I lived from 2004 to 2018. This is unusual for someone who has always been known to the home office. I believe every human can get something wrong. That includes doctors. I can think something is wrong, and so can you. My video documentary contains stories and opinions. Stories can be true or false. But like all stories, proof is not provided. My opinions are based on my experiences. Owing to a long saga with immigration, I have appeared in many courts, particularly in immigration courts as the defendant. Contrary to what most people believe, people who win a case in court have not proved anything. The judges always prefer a quickie. A person can live in a country for decades, but their deportation in a court takes three minutes to decide. A life-changing event for you, but a three-minute job for a judge. The world's biggest successes have never proved a thing in the court where they won their case. So, you should not expect a victim like me to prove anything. After all, if I presented any proof, nobody would be interested in hearing those proofs. My message here is designed to tell why I believe doctors are lying to me. As a layperson, I don't have a legal right to say a doctor is wrong or that he is lying. However, 
all humans can have an opinion.